Inside, the house was bare from top to bottom, every stick of furniture had gone. Left to roam as I pleased, I went first to the staircase and climbed to the two rooms above. I received no psychic impressions in the first room I entered, but in the second. At the back of the house, particularly near the water tank, I could feel the presence of Mona. I went downstairs again and walked around the two lower rooms. It was in the front one that Mona had spent her time, of this I was certain because the child told me so clairaudiently. When I rejoined the policemen outside they quizzed on my findings. I told them the girl had occupied the upstairs back room, and they said it was the bedroom in which some furniture had been found. The front bedroom had been quite bare. They nodded when I mentioned the water tank and said they had found a handkerchief there. This was later produced in evidence at the trial. Downstairs I told them, she had spent most of her time in the front room. This Mona had told me, adding that she had amused herself in copying something out of a book. This was also borne out later in the trial. I said, I knew before I came here that the child was dead. I can now tell you she was killed in that back bedroom. The child's death has yet to be established, came the guarded reply. We have found no body. But, assuming you're right, can you tell us how the crime took place? Death was by strangulation. The murderer then put the body in a sack and left the house by the side door. Why not by the front door? I don't know. All I can say is that it was the side door he used. Actually, one of the policemen admitted, the front door won't open. Nader screwed it up so that it is permanently closed. This is Nader's house? I asked. Yes. I thought it might be.